we'll start with the current stuff. All uh, right. Tell me, tell me about making Bullet in the Face because it looks like it must have been a lot of fun. It was insane. <laughs> it was hilarious. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we were working. Um, in Montreal, which was a gorgeous setting to be in, first of all, because it uh, it lent itself so beautifully to the styling, I think, on the show, because there was this uh, this cross between a Parisian and a New York flair to the style, right? And uh, and so that was ideal. And then, you know, working with that cast was just phenomenal because they were all so excellent and uh yeah, it was it was a lot a lot of fun. It was nonstop. It was really long hours. It was a month and a half of sheer madness. But we all came out on the other end alive, and uh, we came out with this great show. <laughs> well, the thing I can't get over is there's so many shows that attempt what you guys captured in the show. This pulpy kind of comedy and action and, and drama. And I mean, you guys pulled it off like I've never seen it pulled off on television. So I mean, that must make I'm, you guys pretty happy. I'm telling you, that is that has got to be Alan Spencer because he wrote just the most incredible blueprint to work off of, you know. And he really, um, he really even embedded the genius into the interstitials because there would be. Um, you know, the spoken dialogue, but then he would describe a scene and he would say something like, like the hotel room where I have my um, pregnant fight scene. Uh, there's a, a descriptor of the, of the motel in the script, which I wish there was some way of shooting this. It said, the motel room, uh, the motel is as cheap as the stock footage that we found to show it. <laughs> little things like that that he would do that would just oh it would just drive everyone mental because we were howling non-stop right <laughs> that's amazing but I mean I gotta say I mean I do love the direction the art the the editing but I mean the cast you guys are amazing together uh, thank you so much <laughs> well thank you I mean for making this so what was it like working with this group of actors because there, there must be some interesting <laughs> stories Phenomenal. I mean, I, I, <coughs> excuse me. I was lucky enough to work with um, Eddie Izzard, obviously a lot, and um, there were moments. I mean, he he and I were pretty much nose to nose, and <laughs> in that bit about the praying mantis, mantis and the scorpions, yes. right? Yes. And he made that up. I mean, he just started riffing unscripted and. I'm about three millimeters away from his nose <laughs> going, I'm going to lose my mind in a second. How am I going to keep this together? And really, I was pretty impressed with myself that I only broke once, just once. And I started laughing. And he just immediately looked me dead in the eye and was like, stay with me, stay with me. And boom, I was right back. And I could tell that, you know, clearly this is something that happens to him often. <laughs> and then there's, you know, there's, there's Eric, um, who is just, he's such a phenomenal character. And on top of being, playing a phenomenal character, he himself is a phenomenal character, right? And so you get all these crazy old Hollywood stories out of him. And between him and Alan, I mean, I just, I learned a lot about the, uh, the sometimes see me underbelly of the, <laughs> the Hollywood institution. <laughs> well, the other thing I can't get over, can you, can you talk about, about, about playing Martine and preparing to play Martine because I'm amazed at your accent. I mean, your accent oh. was killer. And the <laughs> idea of doing this whole show with this accent in a show uh, with, heavy with accents. It was panic attacking. It was <laughs> panic attack after panic attack after panic attack. You know, and the little known uh, fact about it is that I got hired off of a British accent and they actually changed it to a French one last minute on me and I didn't have French listed as one of the accents I could do. So um, it was particularly challenging <laughs> for me, but uh, thankful to a wonderful dialect coach and, and just a lot of patience on, on behalf of the, the crew and and. And you know, it was it was daunting, and it was it. I was really glad that there was a couple of moments there where I could speak with a normal accent to sort of show that she was even pretending. So if it didn't really fly so well, then maybe it's 
just because she's bad at it, not me. <laughs> and I mean, the did you get gun training and other training in terms of that stuff too? I did. I did. did. You know what? Our our gun wrangler took us out a, a couple of times actually. Um, we started just before production. Uh, I think it was Max and one of the producers, Evie, and I went to go shoot. And right off the bat, it was a little bit uncanny how preternaturally gifted I was at this because <laughs> <laughs> you were meant to be a killer, is what you're telling us. God. <laughs> Apparently, you know, if, especially with an Uzi. I mean, you know, the guys were just all over the map. I was right down the, the barrel. It was it was a little bit spooky. And then we got a chance to work with the Uzi. And the funny thing is, you know, uh, it's illegal in Canada. You can't have automatic weapons, nice. right? <laughs> so um, it, it was one of those th those things where our Wrangler was um, certified and authorized to teach it to us. But in, in the space that we were shooting, we weren't necessarily, it was a little bit outside of the law. So <laughs> we had to uh, sort of ask nicely to, to, to get the space to ourselves. I asked a couple of the other shooters to leave and then you're given this wriggling baby. I mean, literally, it is so squirmy and so full of obvious power, and um, that thing does not sit still, right? And so I was explained that that the the bullet spray tends to go up and out because that's where the gun wants to go, right? right. And and my bullet spray was right down the middle, and he was wow. just not even possible. I don't understand. <laughs> And you know the weirdest part is that the night before we went to do a lot of the uh, the Uzi training, I um, I had this crazy post apocalyptic nightmare where I actually felt like um, uh, uh, you know I was I was in some sort of a house and there were tons of weapons but I had absolutely no idea how to use them, and so I woke up absolutely drenched in a cold sweat panic to, 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 to hell and back and basically think to myself, okay, okay, by the time today is over, I will know how to defend myself. And at the end of that day, I really felt like, okay, if I could pick up an Uzi in the middle of a wartime crazy scenario, I would probably be able to fire that thing. <laughs> well, I mean, you look serious in the show. So, I mean, it's very believable that you can use these weapons. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty awesome, and you know, one of the shoot days we had was a twenty, I think, a twenty-two or twenty-three or twenty-four hour shoot day. It was that jewelry store sequence where we're really blowing up the place and glass is flying everywhere, and they had shot all of one side of it, and then they went to go turn around and they realized the bro the glass broke differently and it didn't match, and uh -huh. we. To reshoot all of that stuff from the other side. Now it's four or five or six in the morning, and we're completely delirious, and we've got guns. <laughs> <laughs> is this really the best combination? But the weird thing is, is that because um, when the guns were on set, everyone would, everyone was really just in a like a hyper focused drive moment. You know, everything was really um, safe and really well taken care of, and really. Um, uh, you know, the consideration was there for the extra amount of, of issues that we'd have to deal with with the effects. And so it went really well. And it was just a real calm that, that took over. And, and, and then we were off and firing. So it went well. It was unbelievable. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I, I would love to talk to you more about, about that show. But then you've also got Haven. I know. Classic Gemini, right? Not just one, but two. <laughs> So, Haven, tell me a little bit about the character that you're going to play for the... It's the third season now. That's right, and it's going to be quite a season. I mean, the first two seasons were almost nothing compared to this one, let me tell you. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic show because it's based on a Stephen King uh, short story, The Colorado Kid. Yes. So you can really feel that quality just underpinning the whole project. You know, it's it's everyone's really stepping up their game to sort of match his name. And and my character uh, tends to come into an existing love arc between the two leads and sort of um, manages to wedge her way in the middle there a little bit. And And it has to do with the fact that she has a particular trouble 
every um, everybody in the in, in Haven, not everybody, but most people, and a lot of people in Haven have these curses or troubles or afflictions or superpowers, if you will. And um, and mine just happens to work really well with uh, the the cop that I end up falling for. So it's sort of um, two ships pa- passing in the night, but uh, but meeting up because of their troubles. So we'll see where it goes this season, but it's been really fun. <laughs> That's cool. Well, it's it's cool that, I mean, you've done a lot of L.A. projects, but, I mean, as a Canadian girl, I mean, uh, we haven't seen a lot of you in Canada specifically, maybe. Yeah, and you know what? It's been really, uh, I mean, it's been really fascinating shooting out in Nova Scotia because that was one of the reasons that I really tried so hard on this audition. I'd never been to the Maritimes before, and I really wanted to go shoot out there and, you know, get to travel on someone else's dime was always nice. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, moving from um, Toronto to L.A. seven years ago, it, it was hard to sort of get started here again because you really have to start at the bottom and nobody knows you and you, you've got to prove yourself all over again. So there were some definite lean years there for a minute where you might not have seen me. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to seeing you in more things like this because this is very cool stuff. Yeah. Do you, what else do you have coming up in terms of projects? Uh, you know what? I've just been auditioning my butt off, so hopefully something will come through this pilot. We're crossing our fingers and uh, still working on the art. There's a couple of paintings back there that I've <laughs> turned away because they're not. <laughs> well, that was actually the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is your art. I mean, uh, what's coming up for you? You seem to be very active even while you're doing all these shows. I know it's been kind of a crazy balancing act for me and it's it's been tougher and tougher to squeeze the art in now that the acting's become so busy which is a wonderful blessing I can't complain about but I definitely do sometimes because it just <laughs> I need that balance right because the pa- the painting is so solitary and the filmmaking is so communal and so when I just get a little too uh fed up with all, having to be answerable to 90 people in a full crew and and you know then it's really nice to shut my door, unplug the phones, and, and go back just to the immediacy of paint on canvas. But uh, uh, I don't have any shows coming up now. Now I'm working on a couple of commissions that I've got to get done before the new year, so hoping I will uh, <laughs> eat those out. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I'll be doing it forever. That's one of those things that that's, that's not going anywhere. You know what I mean? That's in my blood. <laughs> the acting might suffer once my face slides down to my butt, but you don't need to be pretty to, to paint. So, <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you paint on set ever? Like, do you bring stuff with you? So you're like, oh, I have downtime. I could paint here. Oh, like, you know what? That would be awesome. But unfortunately, I'd be a little too petrified about getting paint on wardrobe. Of course. And then I'd be in trouble because then they, <laughs> that would really paint does not wash wash out easily. <laughs> no, you have... Um, I, have, I have sketched on 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 sets before, and I've I've sketched co stars or or other crew members or stuff like that. But uh, but not paint. That would be that be next level stuff. <laughs> you don't want the costume people chasing you down. I know. And they've all been so good to me. I love I love the wardrobe peeps on, on crews so much because I started in, in wardrobe, right? And I, I actually was styling a shoot for a magazine and then some model got sick and she didn't show up. And so the editor said, you're pretty, jump in. And I was like, I'm five, six. What are you talking about? These Amazons are like seven feet tall and towering over me. But I ended up getting some tear sheets and taking it around to agents and, and ended up working in commercials and stuff. So it, That's uh, amazing. It's funny that my roots are deep into wardrobe and, and, and styling, and I always have a deep appreciation for them. <laughs> well, clearly you've got great wardrobe for Bolt in the Face, which is, you know, phenomenal costumes. And Haven, too. You know what? They all they both stepped up, and, they, and there's a... Um, there was an interesting conversation I, I had with one of the writers where he was telling me that some of the initial pitches that were being made about my character had to do with the H&M line uh, of clothing that came out to celebrate a girl with a dragon tattoo. Really? And so it's it's kind of interesting that the character actually started uh, almost the germ of the idea um, beyond her trouble started with the look of her, right? Mm-hmm. And sort of... Um, it's funny because when uh, when the um, executives were sent some uh, pictures about from wardrobe 
from the fittings, everybody was getting fitted. Um, the, the feedback was clearly Jordan does not shop in Haven. She must have some online help. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad this finally worked out. Likewise, likewise. I always held held faith. I I held strong. I knew we could do this. <laughs>